Hi, I'm Beth Tweddle. I've represented Great Britain Gymnastics team for over 10 years now. I've won numerous World, Olympic and European medals. I've decided now that it's finally time to hang up my handguards and move on to my other passion, which is inspiring the younger generation. I've had some amazing moments throughout my gymnastics career and I want to share some of those with you now. I think one of the most defining parts of my career was winning the world title in 2006. It had never been done for a British gymnast before. And I think people believed that I could do it, but in my head, I don't think I really believed it. and I wanted it. Um, leading into that competition, I was European champion. I'd had a disappointing start to the year, um, getting injured at the Commonwealth Games, but it actually turned out that that was maybe um, a positive thing. I had time to work on my bar routine. Um, I was obviously still an all-around gymnast at the time. Um, and I think that's what made it harder. The night before bars final, I'd actually fallen on the bars routine. And I think that made everyone around me more nervous than what I was. The morning, everyone was like, just, just do what you know. Don't do what you did last night. Don't go for bigger, don't go for better. Um, but in the back of my head, I was just like, what's, what's everyone panicking about? And I don't really remember the day as such, but I just remember warming up and everything went fine and just sitting in the back gym for ages because the way finals work, spars always seems to be right at the end. Um, Amanda was really chilled out and relaxed as she is quite often at competitions and that has a positive effect on me. Um, I didn't realise it at the time but when she walked out she'd seen the scores and she said she had a feeling that she knew I could do it. Because I think I was seventh up and had one other gymnast ask me, I'd gone back into the training gym, I hadn't really seen anyone else's routines. Obviously when you walk in you can see the scoreboards and I saw Nastia was at the top with a score over 16 and just thought I've got to do a routine in my life to be able to get that. Amanda always says to me before routine, just do what you know, no more, no less. So that's what I did and now when I watch back the video, you know where the mistakes could have come. But I actually see Amanda, she's down on the floor next to the podium and as soon as I land you just see this little blue blob jumping up and down. Um, and for me it shows how much hard work she's put into it, it's not just myself. Um, Amanda has obviously put a lot of hard work and I stood waiting, waiting for that score and it came up with 16 2 and I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, I've done it, I've done it. And obviously you still have one gymnast to go, it's Ferrari. And I knew that she had to do a routine of her life to sort of go above me, but until it comes out in sort of writing, you, you never take anything for granted. I've learned that throughout my career. And as soon as the final sort of listings came off, I just went over to Amanda and I think everyone around us, my mum, dad, everyone was into tears. And I, I didn't know, it kind of didn't sink in. And I didn't realise how big of a defining moment that was in my career at the time. My number two moment um, is the World Championships in 2009. We were lucky enough to have it on home soil and it kind of gave you that insight of what London 2012 was going to be like. And to walk into an arena having so many people shouting and screaming was just the most unbelievable feeling. I'd had a major roller coaster of a week. I'd gone into qualification obviously hoping to sort of build on my bars reputation and come home with a medal and that. And the floor was kind of an added bonus. Um, but it didn't quite go to plan. Floor, qualification, I had a massive stumble backwards but just about scraped into final and bars just completely went wrong and um, crashed out on my own skill. 
and you could just hear the crowd, um, the, the loud, how loud they were going, ooh. Um, but I knew that I had to get up and finish a routine and I was disappointed. Um, I didn't think I could bring myself back from that. I remember sitting in the hotel room thinking, why am I doing this to myself? You're working day in, day out in the gym and then suddenly on that 30 seconds that you have to prove yourself, it all goes wrong. But the one big thing that kind of helped me, my little cousins were there watching qualification. I went out to see them afterwards, had dinner with them. And they said, oh, we don't care that you fell, we still love you. And you just think that's what it's all about. You, you've obviously worked really hard for it, but you've got to bring yourself back. I still had floor to work towards. So Amanda let me go shopping the next day, just chill out and try and forget what had happened in qualification. And then just kept working throughout the week on floor. I was first up in final and I'm quite glad I was because as soon as I walked into that stadium, the crowd, it could have been a major distraction had I just been stood around waiting. Um, people were throwing things down to me to sign. and um, So I literally presented to judges, did the routine of my life. And Amanda said to me, would you do it again? And I said no. And that for me is always the kind of, if you're given that option to go again and you say no, you know you've done the best routine you could. And I remember getting the score and thinking, mm, that's a bit rubbish. Um, and you can see my face as well. I've watched the video back and I do pull <laughs> the most ridiculous face to say, oh, that's rubbish, that's not good enough. Um, and Amanda said, well, just wait and see. You never know how they're scoring it. And as the routines kept going, the ones that you think, oh, they're going to beat you, they were sliding in behind you. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. And it got to the point where I thought, right, the worst I'm going to be is third. But my competitive spirit just kind of said, well, that's not what I want. I want to, I want to be up there, silver, bronze. No, I want the gold. Um, and it was the most nerve-wracking. I literally have got pictures where I'm hiding in my jacket. Um, but as soon as they, the score came off, I just thought, never in my wildest dreams would you have known me as a floor worker. Up until, I think it was about 2004, 2005, I was kind of just part of a team to make floor and to be honest, most of the time I was a reserve for the floor, let alone um, a world champion. The third and probably the biggest moment in my career was winning that Olympic medal a year ago. Um, I think everyone knows it was my one last shot and it was the one last thing I'd never achieved. I remember the feeling after Beijing of coming forth and I did not want that feeling again. Um, I hated it, it was, it was the worst moment of my career and going into London, everything was going perfect until April and um, I picked up a knee injury. I cried myself to sleep that, last, that night. I thought, that's my Olympics over. I've worked all this time and I'm not gonna get to try and achieve that dream. After the surgery, I worked day in, day out with all the medical team at British Gymnastics. They could not have done anything else for me. They did every possible procedure, movement, anything to get me fit for that Games. And qualification was nerve-wracking because you know if you mess that up, that's your whole Games over. Um, but luckily, for some reason, that seemed to be my day. That was the best routine I'd ever done. The 6th of August came and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought it was going to drag and drag, but I did what I would normally do, breakfast, conditioning, then went to the gym, warmed up, everything fine. I remember, I think it was Tim Jones kind of saying to me, remember everyone's with you just before I walked out. And that kind of gives you a little bit of confidence. Um, and as soon as I walked into that stadium, the noise that that arena gave was a noise that I'll never forget. And, Walking in and just thinking, this is my, this is my moment. I can do it. When I went to do my routine, I wasn't even nervous. I just was excited. It had finally come. I'd waited, presented, did my routine, and took that step on this now. And I, I know for a moment I let my head sort of drop, and then I remember Amanda saying, "Whatever happens, keep your chin up." So I presented, walked off, and I knew deep down that it could be a Beijing all over again and then waited for the score, came up second place and I thought yeah I can deal with that. I knew Mustafina 
had the routine to be able to push me down to third, which she obviously then went and did. A um, couple more girls. And you never know what people are going to do in the final. People sometimes do up the game, do change the start values. And I just had to sit and ride it out. I knew Gabby was last. And I think secretly I was thinking, don't be greedy. You've already got two Olympic gold medals. You've got an all-around title. You've got an Olympic team gold. Um, I just want one Olympic medal to finish my career. People always say to me, what was the feeling as soon as you saw third? And you expect it to be joy and happiness, which obviously there was that. For me, it was relief. Finally, I'd done it, not only for myself, but for Amanda. So that was my last competitive routine, and I just want to say thank you to everyone for cheering me on throughout my career, and I hope you'll join me in supporting some of the younger gymnasts that are coming through now for British Gymnastics.